we continue our special report on the Military Fire Training Academy at Goodfellow tonight with more on what students from all branches of the armed forces are learning. Nathan Mayer shows you. Students at the Department of Defense Fire Academy enter the suppression block where they learn to respond to calls in coordinated exercises that puts all the information they've learned up to this point into one unit. Block three is the suppression block. So uh, that is a 20-day course, and that is where you put together everything you learned in fundamentals, and you start to put it into actual practice. Looking out across the pad at the Lewis F. Garland Fire Academy, it looks calm. But if it's calm, it's because you've already missed the action. When students enter their third block of training starting at 6 a.m., they are out learning how to operate fire hoses, hydrants, as well as techniques in attacking a blaze. This, says instructors, is where firefighters are made. Seeing the transition from a regular young Marine, Army, Airman, or Navy personnel into a full-fledged firefighter and a grown adult and a professional military personnel, we start to see it in the middle of the block as they start going into the fire, as they start understanding why they want to be the firefighter, the passion behind it. And the passion in these students isn't lacking. Airman Basic Alley explains what students learn as they prepare to fight their first fires. So you start out with two days of lecture, then you go outside and you do hydrant operations where you're pulling a hose. Then you do forward lays where you're practicing taking, hooking up to a hydrant, taking the hose out. The reverse lays, which is the opposite. And then you have hose operations, so you learn how to work a hose. Jumping into rotation on hose poles to get first-hand experience, I learned how heavy your gear can feel while dragging 200 feet of fire hose. Students run from the fire truck to the hydrant 200 feet away, have to connect and secure the line, and run back to the truck within four minutes. Ah, After learning all hose pole techniques, it's time to fight your first fire. They're going to go ahead and stage in the building like it's their firehouse. They have their bunker gear stage. Reports of smoke and fire in building 500. All units are shot. Occupants are on. And they're going to go ahead and split them up with the trucks. So you have engine one, engine two, and then you'll have a rescue team. Usually engine one will be the IC that comes on scene, which is the incident commander. He'll be in charge of the scene and the overall test. Go ahead and hop out. Grab, grab that hydrant. Yeah. First truck is essentially... They're the ones who are putting the fire out. They're water, they're on the hose lines. Then you have a separate truck, which is just base manpower, or if we need more water, they get more water, and then you have the rescue team, which goes in and searches for dummies and brings them out. Learning in the classroom and doing the objectives, you have the instructors there to help you, and then for this, it was just, you're on your own, essentially. It was definitely different. Students on their own, but with the teamwork of each other. That's what Army Sergeant First Class Ryan Sarter stresses, that when it comes to firefighting, there's such a high importance of partnership and teamwork. Two in, two out. We're always as a team. We never leave a fallen firefighter behind. That is the number one priority. It's always the life safety, not of just the victims, but life safety of each other and our partners. Sarter says it takes a lot to be a firefighter, but the most important thing is trust in yourself and your partners. A lot of this job is just confidence, very bravado, like being able to take action without thinking about life or threat. Be able to understand the sacrifices that you have to make to go into a fire to rescue someone, to know you're at risk of not coming back. Nathan Mayer, KLST News.